Shalom. Korhalo, Yahweh Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem, Rakakwadash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders. Salutations to all my fellow laborers doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more so than ever. To the scattered elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth among the heathen nations that be like unto the speckled bird, the Israelite foreigners. And to the Akwath that are listening and learning. To you I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolma from the branch of the Great Millstone here in Chicago. Coming at you with another lesson in truth. And pretty much this is a video that was put up by uh, Rising with Crystal and Cigar. And uh, Crystal Ball and Cigar and Jetty. Alright. And um, I guess her parents were being pretty catchy. They named her Crystal and her last name is Ball. But... Uh, but uh and they're interviewing professor wolf who's um an economic you know professor in some university or whatever but um i'm going to just let this video just play but i'm going to start with a scripture all right because the, the things that he's saying you've heard us say it but you know it's 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 almost like um the men of the lord have no credibility with their own and um, so we'll just let you let it let it come from E. As a matter of fact, from from Amalek. On top of that, you know, let's let Amalek tell you. Uh, but first, I want to get uh, a quick scripture because Babylon indeed is falling. All right, it, this place is going down. So let's uh, pull that up. <sighs> this is uh, Revelation um, 14 and 8. And it reads, And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen. Is fallen that great city because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So, of all the wickedness that Esau Edom is doing, it is all the vibration of the men of the Lord uh, preaching the true gospel and calling upon the name of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. The vibration of the Lord is moving through the earth, and it's changing the 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 opinion. Of Esau Edom among the heathen nations, even among other Edomites, as as Amalek is being exposed, the you know the 1948ers, uh, which I'm, I'm just you know uh, uh, aiming, I call them aiming 1948ers or aiming 1948. Um, they're being questioned and they're being brought to the forefront, and all these things are the pedophilia, the uh, the corrupt banking system, the corrupt financial systems that are, are destroying the nations and peoples and families you know the the perverted sex all these things that are going on in the earth uh are coming to a head and the lord is 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 sick and tired of it and quite frankly a lot of nations of the world are tired of it as well including other edomites i just watched a, a video this morning where uh some lady was pushing for the whole pedophilia and how they're lonely and, 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 and afraid and to speak on their feelings and, and they need to be accepted and just be added to the LBG2, LBGTQP, which we've been saying for years now. And so now the, the movement to do that. And they're so worried about these, these adult individuals. What about the children who are the victim of them, who have no understanding? You know, you mean to tell me that you're, you're too young to vote? You're too young to buy a drink. You're too young to stay out past a certain time of night. But you're not too young to be involved in, in a, a physical and emotional relationship with an adult human being. This place is just beyond wicked. And the Spirit of the Lord is bringing it down. This is uh, Revelation 18 and 2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen, and has become a habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. So that's exactly what's going on. Nothing but hate, 
filthy and uncleanliness is 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 coming out of this this rotten zombie-like corpse of Babylon, which is infecting the whole world. And now the financial system um, is failing it as well. Why? Because his wisdom has gone out of teaming. So the lie IQ has failed yet again. The earth is in need of new management. So without any further ado, Professor Richard Wolf. More than 30% of Americans have not made their full housing payments for July, including 19% who made no housing payments at all. And as some unemployment benefits are set to expire at the end of the month, we could expect to see a number of defaults to increase. Coupled with the end of eviction moratoriums, many households are really on edge. Even the banks know that this is not normal. Many of the heavy hitters like J.P. Morgan, Citigroup, and Wells Fargo have been bracing for an avalanche of default loans because of coronavirus. Here to weigh in on what banks, renters, and homeowners can expect, not to mention everyone, is Professor of Economics Richard Wolf. Welcome back to the show, sir. Always great to see you. Good to see you, sir. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at numbers like this, I mean, what can we equate this to and what can we expect going forward? Well, frankly, you can't equate it to anything. It is the worst crash uh, that we have experienced now, even in comparison to the Great Depression of the 1930s, partly because it hit so quickly and cut so deeply into our economy. We already knew that our economic system had meant that half our people could not handle a thousand dollar unexpected sudden expense. They simply couldn't do it. They didn't have enough money in the bank. They couldn't manage. Now you've given them a much bigger problem. Months for many of them uh, of rent not paid, of mortgage payments not made. During that time, the landlords couldn't collect, which means in turn the landlords couldn't pay off their debts to the banks since they had borrowed in many cases. Uh, and this is true, by the way, for commercial rents, just as much, if not more, than for residential rents. So yes, an avalanche is coming, but it is also a sign, and this is the key point, of a breakdown in our normal capitalist relationships. Tenants cannot pay their rent, landlords cannot pay off their debts, everybody is gearing up to go into court, organizing their lawyers to file thousands of lawsuits, we're looking at months, if not years, of crushing litigation, which is also an expense which people will not be able to carry. It is a tsunami in economic terms. Yeah, I think that's such an important point. And Professor, one of the things that we caught our eye this morning is that JP Morgan is setting aside $10 billion to cover expected losses. And I think you can explain that no bank in the country sets aside huge amounts of money to cover losses if it is not a near certainty that is going to happen. But most Americans do not have $10 billion in capital in order to cover their losses. What is the magnitude of loss that we are about to see on a personal wealth level? I think on a personal wealth level, we're going to see a surge in homelessness, people who cannot in any way, shape, or form manage this situation. If you are evicted, you can't cover the cost of a lawyer to protect you against this eviction, especially because the lawyer may not be able to prevail against the kind of legal heavy hitting that banks can afford, that large landlords can afford. We're going to have this spectacle on top of all of the, everything else happening to us of that American situation in which we have homeless people sitting on the curb across the street from unoccupied apartments and homes. And that does not become a sustainable situation like so many other things are becoming unsustainable. Hmm. Professor, I mean, I look at it the same way that you do. It's like an avalanche is coming. We cover these numbers every day. 40% of child care centers say that they are going to have to permanently close their doors. Small business closures are not declining. They are actually accelerating. 
third of homeowners unable to make their payments, unable to make their rent. Week after week, millions more people filing for unemployment. And yet there seems to be this total disconnect, both from the stock market, but that is just like a representation of elites in America where either it, they feel that it's not going to affect them whatsoever or they're unable to see what's going on. It makes me feel like, like, am I crazy? Are they crazy? Just speak to that complete disconnect that we're all witnessing, which is incredibly disorienting. Well, it's partly a reality and partly a kind of economic uh, card game. Here's the reality. Inequality in the United States, which was very severe before all of this hit in March and was itself a contributor to the crash, has now become even worse. You all know the numbers that we have 50 million people filing for unemployment and Jeffrey Bezos, just to pick one, has an increase of $20 billion in his already stupendous well, these are realities that are unsustainable, emotionally, politically, ideologically. Everything will crumble in the face of this harsh reality. Number two, we have something which psychologists call mass denial. The people at the top seem to imagine, wrongly, historically proven over and over again, that somehow the mass of people can be plunged into really abject suffering and it will not somehow come back to bother them. They are in for a rude shock. Let us stop right there for a moment. A couple of scriptures that must come out. All right. And this is Proverbs 11 and 1. A false balance is an abomination to Yahweh, but a just weight is his delight. Proverbs 16 and 11. A just weight and balance are Yahweh's. All the weights of the bag are his work. One more, Proverbs 20 and 23. Divers' weights are an abomination unto Yahweh, and a false balance is not good. And see, balances in, in the American banking system are very, very unbalanced. They follow not the Lord, and that is another reason why you're seeing the fall. Because of what? Because of their fornication. All right? Anything going against the Lord is, is a form of fornication, man. All right? You're, you're going you're, you're going off. You're going wicked. And, and the, the guideline on how to rule over nations and people was given in the Bible, yet they follow them not. That being the problem. Finally, the stock market. The stock market is no mystery at all. The Federal Reserve has pumped trillions of new money, uh, dollars worth of new money into our economy. That new money is not going to hire people or to produce more goods or to expand enterprises because we have a crashed economy that folks out there can't buy what we would produce now normally. And I don't know how simple or how many times that the average dumb American that's so proud with, they, with their lie IQ has to hear that the Federal Reserve is a privately owned bank operating illegally within the, the uh, outside of the Constitution, which was supposedly to govern your country. All right. It, it, it clearly tells you that the, the in the Constitution that the currency of this of this of America would always be gold and silver. All right. And it was never to be anything different. And the Federal Reserve, just because they put the name federal on it, it is not of your government. It operates outside of your government. And in most cases, it actually dictates policy over your government. The Federal Reserve is like another branch of government that the American citizens never voted for. But yet, your smart, dumb asses with your lie IQs allow it to happen. You cowardly Americans. You're not the home of the brave. You're the home of the stupid. The home of the foolish. Let alone if we increase. So where does the money go? Answer, into the stock market. The people who get it, the banks, the large corporations, the wealthy, take the new money, buy shares of stock, bid them up, and so you get this disconnect, as you rightly put it, that is, as I want to stress, historic evidence proves over and over again, this cannot persist, especially in a country like ours that for the previous century prided itself on creating a large middle class. Mm -hmm. And Professor, just to let's lay this out for the audience, what do the tipping points look like? Because I feel like, you know, we're always like, oh, it's about to come, it's about to come. When are we going to know that things are on a slide downward? Or are we already there? We just can't see it. 
we're already on the slide down where we don't want to face it, but it, it's all around us. That's why we're talking about a tsunami of evictions coming on top of the catastrophe we're already going through. And while I don't believe we, we can get away with blaming Mr. Trump, he certainly carries a good portion of the blame, but this is a systemic problem that has been building a long time. That's why people don't have the savings to get through this situation. That's why they're laboring under unprecedented debt. So I, yeah, it'll be lots of little things, each one adding up, but at some point, and I can't predict it any better than anyone else, it will be one too many and then we'll see it in a way that no one will be able to deny. And that he's right. You're going to see it in a way that no one will be able to deny. And he's right. It is here. It is already here. All right. Just just waiting for the right opportunity to bring forth the uh, 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 the incident where they can turn around and blame all of this on the Hebrew Israelites. All right. They're trying so desperately with the anti-Sem movements, with the anti-Sem legislation. And and to connect the uh, the Hebrew Israelites to 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 uh, Islam and to co and connect them to Black Lives Matter and Antifa with uh, Grandmaster Jay, they're looking for any opportunity. And then you have these sellouts uh, uh, Israelites uh, who have no business teaching, who go out on the highways and byways, and then they'll turn around and uh, and promote uh, taking up arms against Esau, Edom, imposing with fringes and weapons, fringes and weapons. So you best believe. They're looking. They're they're going to connect it in that way, and those guys don't ha have no idea of the damage that they've done. But uh, this is uh, James five and one. Go ye, go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. So the the rich men are starting to uh to 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 weep and howl as well because I know lots of low level millionaires who are no longer millionaires. All right, they're struggling. Prominent business owners in, in, in some of the most prestigious neighborhoods uh, uh, in Chicago, you know, on the Gold, Gold Coast owned businesses going under. All right. Low level millionaires good, completely going under. All right. Because what do they do? They service to the high the high level millionaires, which the majority of them have left the Chicago area. All right. Majority of them have left. And when you say these conditions cannot persist. Looking throughout history, what does that mean? Well, to give you an example from our own history, the 1930s. After four years, which wasn't that long, 29 to 33, everything shifted. A center of the road Democrat, Franklin Roosevelt, came into office and suddenly, to the surprise of everyone, we had a tsunami of demands from below. We had a, a labor union movement, the likes of which we had never seen. The CIO in the 1930s in the mid... Wait, let's go a little bit further forward where he starts talking about the blame. ...forms, but basically we're going to see something like that, and when you see that happen, watch out, we're going to have big changes in this country just like the ones in the 1930s changed our history after that. So, Professor, that's sort of the hopeful scenario. I think most people would see that as a, as a hopeful direction that you're going to have more worker power. You're going to have a, a new, you know, renewed safety net that people are going to come together to forge a better future for the country and re rethink the basic economic bargain that we have today. But there's another uglier potential path that is what scares me here as well. Um, I mean, do you agree with that, first of all? And if so, could you sketch out some of that side of the coin? Absolutely. You never have the opportunity for the good news without also the risk of the bad and vice versa. I mean, for good or for bad, these things come together. Yes, we could have the alternative. We could see a government like Mr. Trump's, they would certainly be capable of it, responding to an upswing from below of demands of the sort that we had in the 1930s, and you could have a response to that by ratcheting up scapegoating looking scapegoating that is what they're looking for trump is looking to stay in office all right and the lord just might keep him in there because he's going to be the one to set off this world war three and if he does stay in office which a lot of americans believe that he's going to do something he's already talking about using the military to keep himself in office because if we're in a in a crisis situation he cannot actually postpone 
the uh, the elections, which could very well happen. And they're also looking for someone to blame this on. All right. And like I said earlier, you got these uh, these these sellout Judas goats like uh, Grandmaster Jay and these different uh, Israelites that's pulling up on people and taking pictures uh, with their weapons and going to the fire firing range. All right. And that whole sort of thing and filming it and putting it on the Internet. You know, like I said, posing with uh, uh, with their garments on, with holding their 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 firearms, and people are not going to hear the message. They're just going to look at that and say, "Oh, well, it's these guys' fault." And you best believe, all throughout history, everything that's gone wrong in America, they try to they they always try to point to Jake. Think about it. They 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 always talk when when the everyday and whenever they talk about the. Uh, the welfare situation, whose face do they put on? They put on some fat black woman with all her baby's daddies and put her on TV. And then and the, and the message being sent uh, over, uh, covertly or overtly, however you want to look at it, is that this is the problem. When the biggest problem is that the welfare of the money that's sent to the land of Israel. All right. The Israelis are the biggest welfare uh, uh, recipients of American tax money. And that, and if you just eliminated the tens of billions of dollars that went to, to, and I did say tens of billion that went to the land of Israel, America would actually have some some money to pay its bills and upgrade its schools and its roads and its et cetera, et cetera, build up its some of its uh, uh bad uh, some of its not so great neighborhoods and put stores and businesses there to bring job and economy to make everything okay. But we don't want Babylon Hill anyway. All right, but let's uh, let him finish. Actually, let me read this scripture. This is Revelation 12 and, and 10. And it reads, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now was come the salvation and strength of the kingdom of our power and the power of his Hamashiach. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our power day and night. All right. Which put us in categories. All right. Categories that that uh, that separate us from each other, separate us from our power, and demonize us: Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, niggers, spicks, thugs, gangsters. You know, uh, what was another term that they used for gad for the for the for the for the Northern brothers? Uh, tree niggers, forest uh, uh, prairie niggers. All right, those were old terms from the 18 and 1700s that were used by these by these Edomites. But they're looking for someone to blame. And here it is. For immigrants or foreigners or Lord knows who they'll come up with as a person or group or uh, community to target with the blame. Hoping you hear that? So with that, I want to give all praises going honor unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rekha Wa Wa'abah, Babal, Shalom.